This is a photo of new rocket launcher crewmen at a swearing-in ceremony. For Naval Werfer Regiment 51, the beginning of the German invasion of Soviet Russia was somewhat uneventful. In part two of this private footage series, we'll see their advance towards and then entering of the city of Minsk. We'll also watch newsreel footage showing armor advancing on the city from the south. Before we start with the new material, I've noticed an interesting detail from part one, or maybe it's inconsequential. In one of the last scenes, we saw a destroyed Russian BT-70 tank that was a forerunner to the T-34 and considered the Soviet breakthrough tank. Although relatively lightly armored, it was reasonably well armed for its time and with its tracks removed and traveling on a good road, it could travel at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, which was impressive. Since there are few high quality roads in Russia appropriate for this kind of tank, some believe it had been developed for travel on Western European roads. That this is further evidence that the Soviets were planning an offensive. If Stalin had pulled the trigger first, how might that have changed the dynamics of the war? Could that have led to a second Tannenberg? Nazi Germany tried to portray itself as a bastion of Western civilization. Could a surprise attack by the Russians have changed the narrative of the war? Let me know what you think in the comments section. Just before entering the Lithuanian city Vilna, Regiment 51 was ordered to change directions towards the southeast to take part in the attack on Minsk with the intention of cutting off the Russian army under the command of Timoshenko. They passed through the fully burnt out city of Malichechna. In the meantime, after taking the city of Grodno, armored units from Army Group Center push forwards towards Minsk. In this sector, much heavier combat took place. Eventually, two entire Soviet armies that were concentrated around Bielostok were surrounded and destroyed. Something I find particularly annoying is when documentaries use stock film footage that doesn't match the content being introduced. Honest mistakes can happen, but sometimes the taking of shortcuts is ridiculously obvious. For example, showing Russian tanks when describing German panzers. This is newsreel footage from late June of 1941 and shows German armor advancing towards Minsk. On June 29th, Regiment 51 finally caught up with the 20th Panzer Division on the Moscow Highway outside of Minsk. The last orders are received from General Stumpf and the attack on the city from the north is launched. This is an original situational map of German units on the Eastern Front from June 29th of 1941. We're looking specifically at the units involved in and around Minsk and see that the 20th Panzer Division has attacked from the north. 
Regiment 51 followed them in. The panzers break through the well-prepared defensive positions and lead elements are able to quickly penetrate the city itself. However, rings of Soviet anti-tank guns, mines and tanks do significant damage to the German armor. Arriving at the command headquarters of the Red Army in the city center, a military procession was quickly organized for the divisional leadership. Tanks that were meant to go south to help stabilize the sector and support the 18th Panzer Division enter from that direction mistakenly took part in the military parade. This left the largely burnt out suburbs vulnerable, allowing the Soviets time to regroup and led to heavy urban warfare that probably could have been avoided.